Hello! So just a quick video today covering how to install the new wire-free tack switch boards that I just released for the Game Boy Color. So compared to the original ones, these ones should be simpler to install because they don't have any wires obviously, so that's six wires, six to seven, we'll get to that later, that you no longer have to wire up. So these will just kind of wire up onto the test pads and the board and hopefully make things super easy. So without further ado, let's go ahead and disassemble this and get to it. All right, disassembly is complete, so we'll just go ahead and lift this board out and expose the main motherboard, specifically the front side where the button contacts are. So like I mentioned, um, these are wire free, so no wires to wire up. And instead of doing so, what we have here on the button pads are these little test points. So you can see up here we have one marked P02, that'll be for up, P01 for left, P00 right, P03 down, and then there's similar ones over here. So P11 and P10 for B and A respectively. This does not cover start and select, obviously. There are <clears throat> Uh, no tack switch mods uh, for this that I'm aware of and I've not done so myself simply due to the way that the the membranes are kind of set up with the the two actuation points so it doesn't really lend itself well to that barring a custom membrane uh, but I don't have the means for that but anyway so using these test points what you do is essentially and we'll kind of get into this obviously when we're soldering these on a bit more is you place them over the board just like this and then through these little vias right here you will line up all of the test points inside of those. Um, and you'll see that once that's done, everything kind of nicely lines up. So uh, this hole is clear, this hole is clear, um, this lines up more or less with the grounding point. Uh, and at that point, we're just gonna come in here and we're gonna tack these down with solder. Got a spool of solder. Leaded solder is going to be much easier generally for most people uh, due to the fact that it tends to flow better and it melts at much lower temperatures, so a smaller risk of damaging your board. Uh, I've got my iron here turned on and set to 300 Celsius, uh, which is, you know, it's a pretty good temperature um, for most things. Um, and especially with flex, you don't really want to go much higher than that because you can melt the board and that's not very good. So let's uh, let's kind of start out. So I think I want to anchor this first so that the, the board is kept in place relatively easily. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit more solder to this ground pin because we're gonna wanna make a connection to the flex board. Uh, so we got that blobbed up nicely, not too much. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the D-pad board and we're just gonna kind of lay it over there uh, again, trying to line up the test points like was discussed before, make sure that all of our holes in the motherboard are out of the way, um, and that looks pretty good. Oh. Let's try that again. It can slip around a little bit, which is why you really want to anchor this before you do anything. Uh, slipping on the tack switches here. Okay, that looks good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm kinda of gonna come in with the edge of my iron. This is a J tip, but you know, whatever tip you're most comfortable with, uh, K tip would work fine. Uh, your kind of chisel tip or the one that looks like a flathead screwdriver as well. Uh, we're gonna come into the ground pad here and just kinda heat the pad and the pin at the same time. Try to get that solder to flow right on there and then lift away. So you can see we have a solid connection there and the PCB is firmly anchored in place. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to very carefully come in and solder to each of these test points. Um, and the key here is you wanna try and uh, touch both the, the test point on the board and the pad or the via on the uh, tack switch PCB at the same time. It might be difficult because of the kind of the thickness of the PCB, one of the reasons that uh, Flex is used, you know, aside from just like not interfering with shells and whatnot. Um, but, you know, sometimes we just kind of have to rely on the solder melting, going down in there and heating it up and sticking to the pad itself. Uh, but we can try and get as close as we can. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my iron down on the pad, uh, try and get the little edge or corner right down into the hole to try and make contact with the pad on the board. 
and then we fed some solder in there. Um, and so one thing that you can do to make sure that you have a good connection is to take a pair of tweezers. This is after the fact when everything's all solid and kind of firmly place it down on either side uh, to kind of flatten the board around it and then we can come in with the iron again and reflow that just for a little bit. And now that should be making a good solid connection. And so now we're going to keep doing that around the board. Got a bit too much of my iron here. It's, uh, I'm going to go ahead and apply solder to each of these before we touch them all up. Now the left and down ones uh, can be a bit tricky just because they're pretty close to the switches. Uh, so just be super careful as you're doing those. And you can see I touched it to the switch, but it should be fine as long as it's not left there. And then we'll do the last one. Okay, yep. And you can kind of see the solder as it flows down into the hole, and that's exactly what you want. You don't want it to just kind of stay blobbed up on your iron. That means it's not really going anywhere. Uh, so let's go ahead and touch these up as best we can. All right, that should be good. Nice and flat. Flatness is key here because it's going to help, first of all, with contact, uh, reduce flexing in the board as it's used, and it's also just going to make the fit uh, in the shell with the buttons uh, better. So come in and touch that up. And all of those should be good now. Now let's go ahead and come in here with the AB board. So very similar thing. Uh, we just want to line up these two vias right here with the test points on the board. And then uh, what we want to do to make this easier to solder is we're actually going to tin up this bottom ground pad here. So let's go ahead and do that. That'll just make it easier to solder that onto the negative battery terminal. All right. And line up the pads again. All right, so now we're going to hold that in place. Um, I'm actually going to come in here with just a little bit of flux. Right there, just to help everything flow nicely. And so what we're going to do is we're going to touch, again, our iron to the pad on the flex PCB and to the negative battery terminal. Now, it's important that you get heat into both parts of the joint. Otherwise, they're not going to join properly. So let's go ahead and get that. This negative battery terminal can take quite a while to melt and quite a bit of heat, uh, but if you just keep at it, you'll eventually get it. And yeah, so you can see we got a little bridge there. It, it, you don't have to have the entire thing uh, making contact through solder. You just need a little bit. Um, and it looks like we have well more than half um, attached between the pad and the terminal. So that's really, really good. And you can see that the PCB is actually still flat. There's like a little curl there, but that's that's fine. That'll get pushed down by the membranes. So just like before, gonna come in here on, start with B. So iron to via and pad on the motherboard, feed some solder in, hold it there, watch the solder fall into the hole, and we're good. And then repeat with A. All right, we will get that out of the way, come in with the tweezers again, try and press down on either side, make sure it's flat, retouch. Same thing with A, retouch, and we are good to go. Almost. Uh, so I have seen this come up a couple times with the previous iteration, um, and the same limitations, I would say, uh, still remain. So the A and B buttons, because this uh, negative battery terminal is used both as a, an anchor point and a ground connection, um, optionally, uh, sometimes people will solder it up. They'll have B wired up. They'll have A wired up. They'll have this negative uh, battery terminal wired to this pad here and they'll wonder why their, their board isn't working. And so the reason for that is because this is not actually connected to the common ground of the board. Um, and that is because if you were to wire it up just like this, and this was always connected to common ground, and then you were to plug in a DC adapter down here, your A and B buttons would no longer work because there's a switch inside here that physically disconnects the negative battery terminal from ground on the Game Boy Color. So uh, it's really about making a trade-off. Do you want to run a wire, uh, which you can do from this ground pad right here up to basically any ground point, um, 
past the negative battery terminal on the board. So you do up here, you could do, I believe it's pin two on the DC jack, jack down here. Um, you could even like run a wire around the back to one of the ground squares, although that's not recommended at all. Or if you don't care about the DC jack, because who does? This is a portable after all. What you can do is you can bridge um, these pads right here. So there's two pads uh, pointed to by this text, ground alt. And what that's gonna do is connect negative battery terminal here to the common ground of the board. Um, and that'll allow your buttons to work. So obviously I can't use the DC jack anymore, but this is a much cleaner install and I never use the DC jack anymore. So solder or iron rather, two pads. Uh, not making a like, great connection there. Let's clean the iron and then feed solder in. And you need a decent amount to make sure that they bridge together. So just like that. And uh, now we are good to go. And just to make sure that everything is as we expect, if you have a multimeter, now would be the time to break it out. And so we're gonna set this to continuity mode and we're gonna make sure that everything here is set up correctly. So touch the leads. Yep, make sure continuity is working there. And so what we're gonna do is uh, check if all of these points on the two tack switch boards are connected to the relevant uh, nets on the Game Boy Color motherboard. Um, just, you know, just to make sure that the, the solder joints are correct. Uh, so what we can do is use these pads right here, which would be used in the case of a Game Boy Color with se severe corrosion to run wires uh, if your test points, for example, are gone. Uh, but we're just gonna use them for testing right now. So the normal via is up here. So left, up, down, right. Uh, we don't need to worry about select and start and then BA. So one probe on, we'll start with left, one to the via for left. So we have continuity. So that means that this uh, connection right here is solid. So let's go ahead and move to up and check the pad next to that. That one's good. We'll go to down, check the third via here. That one's good. Uh, D, make sure D is good. That one's good. And then we'll come over here to B. That one's good. And then A, it's gonna be the very last one. So it looks like all of our connections are nice and solid. Excuse the noise there. Which means that we're essentially done, uh, aside from reassembly. So I'm just gonna clean this up put it back into the board and then we will test it out. Okay, units all reassembled. Let's slap some batteries in this bad boy and let's make sure that our buttons are working. Nice. So first let's feel. Nice clicks on A and B. And then all of our directions are good. So let's go ahead and turn this on and find out if it works. All right. Up and down at least are working. A is working. And then, come on. One of these days I'll set a save that's actually like past this so I don't have to do all this futzing about, hopping out of bed. All of our directions are working. Let's talk to Taryn over here and B is working. So that was 100% successful. That is nice. That's not always the case. Although this is a, this is a pretty simple install as long as you're relatively comfortable with a soldering iron. Uh, just a couple other notes on this. So during the reassembly time-lapse, probably, you may have seen that I was cleaning with a Q-tip and what was uh, isopropyl alcohol on the end of that Q-tip, the uh, just getting the flex off the joints. You wanna be super careful when you do that because if you get any kind of liquids, um, especially like some of the flux which might come up when you wash with IPA, if you get any of that into the tactile switches on the boards, it's not going to destroy the switches, but it's not gonna be good for them either. Um, there's always a possibility that they'll become gummy or they're gonna become unresponsive. That's not an, a simple thing to fix. You can technically remove the domes, clean it out, close it back up. But my suggestion is if you really want to clean off the flux, which you don't have to, but if you want to for aesthetic purposes, um, or if you want to use flux to make your joints better, which again, if you're using uh, leaded solder with flux core, rosin core, 
that should generally not be necessary. But if you do, use the smallest amount that you can so that there's the uh, a much reduced chance of Flux making its way into the switches. But anyway, that is it. So if you want clicky buttons like on a Game Boy Advance SP, or at least very similar, that is how you install them, wire-free. These are available currently on my Etsy shop, and yeah, on Oshpark maybe one day. We'll see. See ya.